Welcome to all lists. If you enjoy our videos, please make sure to subscribe and don't miss any new videos by clicking the bell button. Many people think of Albania as a poor third world country. Is this really true or is it just a hoax? What happened after the civil war in 1997? Today we're counting down the top reasons not to move to Albania. Number 1. Healthcare. Healthcare is extremely poor. Tirana Hospital isn't clean. Under Soviet rule, the healthcare service was adequate, but following the end of the Soviet regime, insufficient funding was made available to maintain hospitals and services, so healthcare fell into decline. Things have started to improve but still lagged well behind the standards you would find in Western European countries, with the range of equipment and medical technologies available being relatively poor. There is a choice of private hospitals in Tirana, but services and facilities outside the capital are more limited. Some expats choose to travel outside Albania for medical procedures and operations. If you take regular medication, you may need to arrange to source your medicines from your home country, as some medications are unavailable in Albania. Expats moving to Albania are advised to take out a healthcare insurance plan, and should consider including cover for private dental treatment. Some international clinics have opened doors in Tirana. Good news. Because the state health system is nothing less than a disaster. And this is not so much due to the expertise of doctors but the poor state of facilities, equipments and thus possible treatments. Albanians that have the chance to travel abroad, go there if they need any serious treatment. As an expat, you can't receive free public health care. Be prepared to pay from 10 to 25 euros to see a doctor privately. General physicians are cheaper than a doctor who specializes in specific or advanced treatments for certain disorders and diseases. In regards to pharmacies, most antibiotics are less than 5 euros. Other prescription medications for disorders and diseases are from 15 to 25 euros. Number 2. Education. If you are a student and lucky not to have been brainwashed, Life for you would be monotonous and helpless. Surrounded by unprofessional teachers and the likelihood that you would not have the right books is very high. The level of basic education of Albanians was surprisingly high in 1995. However, the quality of state schools has been deteriorating since 1990, as wages for teachers are ridiculous and school facilities are poor. There are a number of private and international schools in Tirana. The higher the tuition of schools, the lower the quality, as it serves the few lucky rich, to buy university admission for their kids. Their kids know or at least assume that it can be bought, which does not strengthen the position of the teachers. Another problem for women in Albania is a lack of proper health education and basic hygiene products. Tampons are only sold in larger cities, so many women are forced to use pads their entire lives. Health education is not only an issue for women, but for men as well. Things are slowly changing, but there still are not many mandatory health education classes at schools, and much is directed through the local directory of public health. However, when health classes are given, only certain students may receive the lessons. It is possible for a student to go through her entire educational journey without ever receiving a health lesson. Number 3. Transportation. The best form of public transport is the bus service that connects different parts of Albania and operates within major cities. Standard buses are reasonably comfortable, and usually have air conditioning. There are also mini buses or Fergans. While buses tend to run to a timetable, 
Fergans usually simply depart as soon as they are full of passengers. The rail network in Albania is fairly limited and the trains themselves are quite basic. However, traveling by train does give you a chance to take in some of the beautiful scenery of the Albanian countryside. Trains in Albania are inexpensive, and all are operated by the National Railway Service. Recent redevelopment work in the center of Tirana has resulted in the closure of the old central railway station. This is due to be replaced by a new modern railway station. In 2014, a major development project was announced to construct a tram network in Tirana. If you wish to drive while you are living in Albania, you will need an international driver's permit. This allows foreign nationals to drive in Albania for up to 12 months. Expats wishing to drive in Albania for longer than a year will need to apply for an Albanian driving license. The minimum age for driving is 18 years. The quality of roads varies, but in general is poor, which can make driving in Albania hazardous. Road traffic accidents cause a higher number of fatalities than in other countries in Eastern Europe. Driving a car here is indeed a special experience. You really have to be a good driver with a lot of foresight if you want to avoid near-death experiences. However, if you do have those skills and if a little anarchy does not scare you off, driving there can also be fun. Albanian people have no regard for any human life. They overtake on bends and pull out in front of you without looking. You really have to have your wits about you when driving here. One might think they are going to die on more than a few occasions when driving. They really don't care. It's free for all. Who dares wins there, especially in Tirana. The roads are appalling with craters and some roads are just not drivable if you value your car. For a month long bus pass, you can expect to pay about 10 euros. A return bus ticket should cost a little less than 1 euro. Travel in Albania is an adventure, and often a very slow one. Buses may be crowded and unreliable, and roads in poor condition are made more dangerous by the chaotic mix of vehicular, pedestrian, and animal traffic. Train service is limited to a few areas and is very poor. Most travel is by bus and minibus, but some private cars and vans operate as taxi services among towns and villages. There were virtually no private cars in Albania before 1992, resulting in a relatively young automotive culture. You will have to take delays and detours into account when planning your trips and travel with a trusted companion when possible to help ensure your safety. The difficulties of travel are a good incentive for staying at your site and becoming part of the local community. Traffic accidents are one of the highest probable risks here. To mitigate that risk, Peace Corps Albania has a transportation policy that you will need to learn and follow. If you live in Albania full time and have a car, that part is going to cost you. Automobiles are more expensive here than they are in many other European countries. Plus gas prices are quite high considering what salaries are like. You can easily spend 20,000 euros on a basic compact manual sedan. Gasoline is around 1.20 euros per litre, though at least you won't get hit with tolls on the roads. Because of the high car prices though, it's tough to find a rental car for less than 45 euros per day. A hotel or agency can usually hook you up with a driver for less than that. Public transportation is a bargain, though figuring it out isn't easy. The bus system is rather chaotic throughout Albania, with vans and minibuses that don't gather in any large central station. As one website put it, Tirana remains the last major city in the known universe without a bus or train station. Even traveling between the two biggest cities takes some sleuthing around and you may be shuttled from one van onto another midway. You'll have to travel pretty far to pay more than 10 euros though for intercity rides. Taxis are metered and a bit over 2 euros to start, then about 65 euros cents for each kilometer. This goes up during the night and if you're going really far they might just quote you a price. 
You can pay 20 euros for a cab to the airport, but for about a 30 minute drive in the middle of the night. Local buses are 25 to 50 euro cents, if you can figure out the route. You might find some scheduled bus routes suspended simply because the bus isn't full. Suspending the only bus route from the center of Tirana to the airport because there weren't enough people an hour and a half before your flight is a possibility. In fact, grounds for giving even the most relaxed traveler a panic attack. If money isn't an object then this won't be an issue because you can always find a taxi. However, if you are on a tight budget and relying on public transportation to get around, this could be problematic. Number 4. Sexism. Women do not go out in the villages. Their responsibility is to clean the house, cook the meals, and tend to the farm. Village life adheres to those traditional gender roles. Village women wake up at the crack of dawn, every day, to begin cleaning the house cooking breakfast, and doing other housekeeping tasks. The men do not share in any of the work around the house. Being a woman who has blonde hair, light skin, and blue eyes definitely makes you stick out like a sore thumb. These differences in appearance can make you an easy target for men on the street. You can often receive catcalls and other comments while walking around. It is common for people to stare at you. Sometimes people turn all the way around and stare at you for hours on public transportation or follow your every movement as you walk past. Throughout the country, there are certain establishments that are only for men. Women can enter, but it would be extremely rare and awkward for everyone involved. There are coffee shops, restaurants, pool halls, and areas of town that are for men. Yet there are rarely any places just for women. Some larger places, in bigger and more progressive cities, have established times for women to come and go, and some even have gyms exclusively for women. But, establishments for men greatly outnumber anything for women. Besides the lack of activities and places for women to go, there continues to be a lack of visible women on the street in some cities, and women rarely go outside at night. In the center of some cities, you see about one woman for every 20 men. This is not necessarily the case for larger areas in the country. Number 5. Homophobia. The violence is so sophisticated, that it's a financial violence for instance. When parents find out about their children, the first thing they do is like, okay, we won't give you any money. We're not paying any more for your university and if you want to leave the house we will not pay you rent for another house. And we will not let you get a job in this city. There were cases of violence especially from brothers, against their younger brothers. Extreme violence sometimes and the problem is that the community is quite unresponsive and not willing to report that violence. And that's because there's not enough infrastructure, how to address that kind of violence. Some documents of Muslim communities complain about increasing cases of homosexuality, in their specific regions. And sometimes there were cases of hunting for homosexuals in the schools, or sometimes there were cases that if two people were in conflict one guy was going to invent a homosexual case in order to put the other one in jail. Homophobia is so prevalent that some women have resorted to living a life of a man and being virgin forever since it's a man's country. They dress, act and look like a man. If you are an Albanian with a stable job and if you live in Tirana, and most importantly if you are used to general inequality that exists all around, you can live a great life in Albania. Number 6. Poverty. Typical salaries run from 250 to 800 euros per month. So if you come here earning a few grand a month from your virtual business or telecommuting job, you're going to be feeling flush. The economy is poor. There is a lot of poverty in this country that needs sorting. On average here, women mainly work in the factories, sewing, making bread and so on, 
and get paid around 100 British pounds per month for it. Men make a little more at about 200 or 300 British pounds per month doing more manual jobs. The people mostly are lovely but there's depression and poverty and everyone is stressed, trying to figure out a way to make money. Albania continues to be second poorest country in Europe in terms of per capita GDP. Number 7. Pollution. They have amazing beaches stretching for miles but are in desperate need of cleaning up and adding a few bars and so on. Rubbish is everywhere, even in the rivers. Winters can be long and tough in Kosovo. One of the biggest problems is that people burn coal in their homes for heat, which produces an awful smell and pollutes the air. It soaks into your hair and clothes the minute you step outside and lingers with you all day. It's unpleasant to breathe. There is so much trash here. Everywhere you look. Areas that should be clean and beautiful. Green spaces. Rivers. All of it is often ruined by trash strewn all around. It's disheartening to see such a beautiful country plagued by this problem. 8. Unemployment. There are no agencies here to look for work. It all depends what you are qualified to do as to whether you will get a job here. There aren't enough jobs here for the locals, let alone for foreigners. Also, if you are lucky enough to get a job here, be prepared for poor wages. 9. Stray Animals Stray dogs wander the streets with mange. It's a running joke, admittedly a sad one, that when people leave Kosovo they don't take a traditional souvenir, they take a new pet. Or two or three. There are an abundance of stray cats and dogs all over Pristina, and most of the country. It is sad to see, and most people cannot resist and end up adopting at least one pet during their tour. The few shelters that exist are overcrowded and lack funding. 10. Corruption. Government is only interested in lining their own pockets first. Yes, they are looking to get into the European Union, but they are not ready for that yet. There is a lot of corruption in this country with police and teachers being the main culprits. The country is corrupt. Every Albanian knows this. It makes their life difficult too. And they don't like this. 11. Infrastructure. The infrastructure needs improvement. The country is beautiful but is slowly being ruined by buildings. Life here is a bit like in the UK 50 years ago. They have a lot of catching up to do, but are slowly trying. The main beach of the country is in Durs, which is completely built up with massive apartment blocks and shops to cater for people. Tirana could be beautiful but they don't work fast on finishing the work in squares and public spaces that they dug up, so it just looks a mess. Such construction works often take years. Number 12. Power Cuts. Restrictions have left most Albanians without power for light, heating and cooking for 18 hours a day. Only emergency services and foreign embassies have had unrestricted power, in what some describe as Albania's worst ever power shortage. In outlying areas power is cut an hour earlier, but there are villages that have no electricity for days on end. Number 13. Water shortages. Correspondents say Albania's grid is on the brink of collapse, with water supplies in the hydropower plants reaching the minimum level. The last such plant was built about 30 years ago and there has been little investment in the grid since. 
the failure of existing hydropower stations to produce energy has been blamed on low water levels. 14. Prostitution. Most clubs or late bars aren't really for couples. Most of them are visited by a few single men and some scantily dressed single women. Most bars have strippers, not ideal for honeymoon. There are lots of prostitutes in the street in Saranda, not a pleasant sight. 15. Food Variety Food is limited to variety. You will find an abundance of Greek. Italian and obviously Albanian food but if you're craving something spicy or even just a burger, you're going to be hard pressed to find that unless you're in Tirana. There is not many choices of food like everything is cooked in a deep fryer with bean soup and bread, tomato and cucumber salad and so on. There just aren't a whole lot of ethnic restaurants, especially Asian. Albanians meet in cafes but don't eat out all that much when they're not on vacation. So there's not a lot of variety. 16. Postal Service The postal service here is next to non-existent. You cannot get almost anything sent here. 17. Rich and poor gap. The majority of the country is poor, yet shops, especially clothing stores and others can be very expensive. There are supercars that can only be seen in Albania, which has a lot to do with drugs. You are either very rich or very poor here with the majority being poor. There's not much evidence of a healthy in between. 18. Traditions and customs. Some Albanians can't stop rumoring and judging. For example, a girl can't date a boy only, she can marry him. If a girl who is 15 years old is going out with a boy or just being seen with one, this is considered a harmful shame, but still, if a girl who is 15 years old and gets married, this is normal. You get mixed responses from Albanians every day. Some are really friendly and chatty others look at you like you're strange. People tend to not say expressions like please or thank you. When you say that, they are often shocked. The majority of Albanian people have never left their country due to the restrictions. In Albania there is not such things as being a friend with the opposite sex. They are not yet as open-minded as Western countries. Albanians are very proud people and don't take criticism well at all. Traditionally, a daughter-in-law assumes the role of caretaker to her mother-in-law and is expected to take over the majority of housework and cooking. This is particularly true if you live in the in-law's house. 19. Groundhog S Day Socially there isn't much to do here. There are bars and restaurants and they do great food. There are no parks or recreation places here. There is a small park in Fear, but you have to pay to get into it and it only caters for small children with a few play swings and slides. There are no swimming facilities other than the sea, no cinemas, only one in Tirana. It can feel like every day is the same here. You often pass the same people, at the exact same spot, walking to work each morning. You almost always eat lunch at the small restaurant on the compound and there's a rotation of about three to five things you eat, while sitting with the same people every day. The lack of variety and choices can wear on you. Small changes are happening though, like new restaurants are opening or Sabajo the craft brewery that many folks enjoy. 20. Capital Concentration Tirana as a capital offers much more facilities than any other town there. Other towns may be lovely, 
charming and may also start developing. Thus, most of them have a decent hotel, some good restaurants, certainly a number of acceptable bars by now. But the difference with Tirana is very pronounced. All state institutions are in Tirana. 90% of the expat community and white collar jobs are located there. Virtually all major companies have their main offices there. It has the only airport. The hippest and trendiest places for nightlife. Restaurants and shopping are established there. In the case of nightlife with the only exception that during the summer season, the trendiest places move to the seaside resorts around Dermy. 21. Lack of personal space. It's good to have a little elbow room when you're checking out at the store, or waiting in line for something, but that's hard to come by here. People often get in your personal space and stand just a little bit too close. Check out new videos and subscribe below.